A lot of people look at pre-workouts and they go, oh, well, that artificial chemical stuff, it's gotta be bad. They're like, okay, how? And they're like, oh, well, this has got chemicals in it. Well, you're made of chemicals and I just breathed in exclusively chemicals and so did you if you breathe. If you're not breathing, that's probably a bigger problem. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for RP Strength. Today's video is to ask and answer the question of is pre-workout unhealthy? You're gonna hear a lot of stuff online about this because a lot of people use pre-workout and a huge fraction of those people are somewhat health conscious. Making the claim that pre-workout is unhealthy is gonna get you a lot of clicks and views and your reels and stuff. And sometimes there's some good points and other times it's a bit exaggerated. So let's take a look. First of all, what the hell is pre-workout and why do people use it? It is typically a supplement, usually in powder form that you mix with uh, water. And it's taken before training to boost energy, focus, and performance to give you better workouts on the output side. Most of the formulas that are effective contain caffeine and potentially a few other stimulants. They can also have pump enhancers, things that make you uh, look more swole during a workout, nootropics, basically drugs that make your cognitive state a little bit better than just the crazy psychosis of caffeine, and sometimes uh, endurance boosters like beta alanine so that you can get a few more reps going. They're used to fight fatigue. Like if you're really tired, pre-workouts can be really effective. They can improve workout quality, giving you a couple extra reps at the tail end of all of your sets and really allowing you to focus in on the mind-muscle connection. And you can get a situation where you feel more hyped to train, which feels awesome. And it feels so awesome that some people become kind of psychologically reliant on pre-workouts feeling they kind of need the pre-workout to feel like they're going to have a good session. They might also have very good sessions without a pre-workout, but a lot of that pre-workout hype that you get is ends up being a little bit placebo effect. It's definitely a real effect there, but a lot of it is, uh, uh, you know, you know you want the effect, you expect the effect, and sometimes that can mean like, hey, I'm working out, I need pre-workout. Scott, you ever had uh, people jo joke around about like, like if they're going to train, they have to have pre-workout? Oh, yeah, everybody. 100%. That's like a thing. <laughs> like so it, many people. Yeah, and it's like we know that's not true, but they sure don't want to believe that it's not true. So there's a reliance thing that we'll address a little bit later on. What specifically is in pre-workouts? The main ingredient is caffeine. A lot of the other stuff does some minor things. Caffeine is the heavy hitter. It's the main stimulant, and it ranges from milder versions of pre-workouts being about 100 milligrams, which is like a very strong cup of coffee, all the way up to the more extreme versions being 400 to 500 plus milligrams. <sighs> a thousand milligrams a day is a preposterous amount of caffeine and represents the safe limit for most people. Above that, you can be okay, but it's not a guarantee. To have one pre-workout product have 500 milligrams of caffeine is kind of a lot. Sometimes it makes sense. I believe the, it used to be at least back in the day, the Ronnie Coleman workout series uh, of supplements had 550 milligrams of caffeine in, in a single dose. And that's like, boy, oh boy, if you're Ronnie Coleman, you lift those kind of weights, that might make sense. If you're a lot of other people, it could make sense, but you definitely have to look twice to see, do I need this much caffeine and can I tolerate this much caffeine? Beta alanine is an ingredient you'll see often in pre-workouts. It, uh, can, it causes the tingles. It makes your skin feel like you're like rubbing like some kind of like rough sweater on it. It's kind of, I, I hate the feeling. A lot of people like it. It does help a little bit with muscular endurance, but you have to take it consistently over months for it to increase your buffering capacity. You basically, the, the lactic acid doesn't hit as soon and you can get a couple more reps in. Um, it could be helpful for hypertrophy, but uh, a lot of people like the tingles because it kind of lets them know the product is working, which is dope, super cool vibes. I don't get it, but that's a thing people report. And a lot of time you'll have like citrulline malate or a variety of different kinds of nitrates. These improve your blood flow and muscle pumps. The research on them is they typically do not result in any bigger muscle gains. But part of the reason why you train is to get more jacked. A part of the reason why you train is so you can look cool while you're at the gym. And if you have a harmless way of making yourself look cool, even if it's not helping you get more jacked, it's kind of dope. So I don't ever want to shit on pump supplements. I think they're great. Just as long as you know, like, there's not like a real big effect, if any, on long-term gains. But if there's a cool psychological effect, like, hey, might as well, right? It's, it's, it's the same thing as like wearing a stringer tank top versus wearing a sweater. You'd have the same performance in both, same muscle gain in both. But once you're nice and juicy, getting that string or tank going, flashing a nipple to Stacy across. Nah, that's going to go. You're going to jail for that one. 
you know what I'm saying, most muscular, whatever people do in the gym, real people with real friends. Another one is creatine is sometimes included. Now, this is an example of what's typically called pixie dusting in the supplement industry. You put a little bit of everything into it so you can put it on your label, but a lot of these things aren't in the dose or in the frequency necessary to actually have the effect. Creatine accumulates in your muscle cells over time, and I mean like days and weeks, and then you just keep taking it to keep the levels higher. So creatine pre-workout has no acute effect. You will not get a better workout if you take creatine right before. You will not get a better workout if you take creatine right before three consecutive days. You got to go for like a week, week and a half, and then it starts to make a difference. I recommend you take creatine either in the morning or the evening with all the rest of your supplements, just like, you know, scoop it and chug a little bit of water. Creatine is a thing that in pre-workouts looks like it makes sense, but it actually doesn't. And so really good pre-workouts don't have creatine. On the other hand, a lot of really good pre-workouts do have it. And the number one reason why they have it is the research teams are real smart. They know it's not an essential ingredient. But unfortunately, the way marketing works and the way kind of like people's intuition about this stuff works is a lot of folks will be like, hey, yeah, like um, this one has creatine. This one doesn't. I'm going to buy the creatine one. And so like the scientifically minded pre-workouts that don't have a supplement you don't need in it end up losing out on market share to supplements that have looked like they have everything. So a lot of companies, even good companies that make a fine product, will put creatine in there just to appeal to TikTokers that never bother to go search on the internet or talk to ChatGPT about, is creatine really timed well in my pre-workout? And I'm not even blaming TikTokers because it's like, how would you know to ask that question? It's like a workout supplement should be in my pre-workout, right? Makes sense. In reality, not how it works. They also have some nootropics in there, things like uh, L-theanine, Alpha GPC, taurine, a lot of these do a little bit of boosting mental focus, but mostly what they do is they smooth out the crazy restless anxiety of your caffeine high and allow you to be like this perfectly smooth executing work machine. That's cool. Uh, these definitely have value. Just that 300 milligrams of caffeine is a bad time for most people. 300 milligrams of caffeine plus plenty of alpha GPC, L-theanine, and things like taurine, all of a sudden, yeah, there's a higher probability you just feel really focused and really awesome versus feeling like, you know, you're having a panic attack. So that's basically what's in a lot of pre-workouts. Let's talk about why pre-workouts and how pre-workouts can be unhealthy. Basically, there are three ways to do it. One is having more than a thousand milligrams of caffeine per day total with the inclusion of pre-workout. That's just bad news and nothing good will happen from that in most cases and plenty of low level bad stuff. Exhaustion, insanely low sleep quality, you know, paranoia, all this other crazy stuff from way too much stimulants. Heart rate goes up, blood pressure can go up. Not great for long-term health. It's just too much. The other way is if you have pre-workout after the early afternoon, like 3, 4 p.m. and later, higher dose caffeine and other stimulants definitely disrupt your sleep quality. This happens to almost everyone. Even if you're one of these people that can fall asleep no problem after having eight cups of coffee, your quality, your amount of deep restorative and REM sleep is lower. So you're actually getting less jacked, you're secreting less growth hormone, you're burning less fat, you're building less muscle, and you're recovering less simply because you're having pre-workout too late in the day. For the very sensitive to caffeine, it can even make falling asleep tough. So if you have a 7 p.m. workout, you take pre-workout for it. At 11, you're trying to fall asleep in bed and you're just like laser burning the ceiling with your eyes. That's not recovery. That's not restoration. Then you get six hours of sleep instead of eight. That's going to start to kick you in the dick. All of the benefits, all of the benefits of having really great workouts with pre-workout are completely crushed out by missing even an hour of sleep regularly. I have to say that because that's the way it works. Now, that being the case, that's really all the downsides in mostly of these pre-workouts. So if you use a moderate amount of pre-workout earlier in the day, it's totally cool. If you only use enough to get you a kick and not an amount that you're like not sure if you're going to retain your sanity, and you can sleep normally with high quality, and it doesn't cause you to have panic attacks or anxiety, and your sleep quantity is unaffected because you can fall asleep on time, you're probably good to go. A lot of people look at pre-workouts and they go, oh, well, that artificial chemical stuff, it's got to be bad. They're like, okay, how? They're like, well, this has got chemicals in it. Well, you're made of chemicals and I just breathed in exclusively chemicals and so did you if you breathe. If you're not breathing, that's probably a bigger problem. Pre-workouts are totally cool. 
as long as you don't get into the situation where you're taking them much past 2 or 3 p.m. on your typical day and you're not taking a crap load of them and your caffeine overall isn't excessive, which means coming up to and exceeding 1,000 milligrams a day, which sounds like a lot, but then you look at how some people live their lives and they're like, dude, you've been dunking 1,500 milligrams for a real long time. How do you know if you're using pre-workout right? Because you could be like, I, I think I'm getting good sleep. I don't know. How the hell do I find this out? So let's find out if your pre-workout use is Gucci or to use Moribonics, nah, family. I'm good. Gucci and nah, fam. After you use pre-workout earlier in the day versus days on which you don't train or don't uh, use pre-workout, do you have more trouble falling asleep? Do you have lower sleep quality? Lower sleep quality typically means that you feel um, like you've never gotten in a deep sleep. You wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, well, oh, I could just like go work right now or something. You typically don't have as many deep dreams or anything like that. That's definitely a situation in which your sleep quality is lower. Uh, a good way to see if your sleep quality is high, good, not great, but it's better than nothing. If you wake up in the morning, you're like, where the, where the f- am I? And you're like in a crazy dream world. You don't remember where your name is. That means you were in some deep sleep. If you wake up and you're like, oh, it's is it still yesterday or I feel the same, mm, probably kind of surface level sleep. And a big question to ask is, can you still have almost as amazing or just as amazing workout sessions without any pre-workout? If the answer is like, actually, I have good workouts one way or the other, the caffeine stimulant effects of pre-workout probably just aren't worth it because there's ways in which you can have stimulants even 1 or 2 p.m. during the day. Almost all the effects are gone, but it still causes you a few hours of slightly lower quality sleep in the beginning of the night or can delay sleep onset by 15 or 30 minutes typically than normal. Yeah, it's probably not worth it. But if you, with pre-workout, can train like a machine and without it, it really sucks and you have all the sleep checked, hey, look, pre-workout's totally fine. It's totally fine, especially if you're not buying wacky stuff with really weird ingredients. Some pre-workouts used to contain and still do contain some sketchy, excessive ingredients. These are mostly stimulants that are sort of not so approved or question mark approved for human use. Uh, The original Jack 3D formula, as you all remember and love, had DMAA in it, which is like basically meth, meth light, synephrine, hooperzine A, and a few other ingredients that are just like, damn, this is legit. And then they typically feel qualitatively different. They can have unwanted side effects. They can put you at slight cardiac risk. They're going to really screw up your sleep and so on down the line. So if a pre-workout makes you feel really wacky, consider having less of it. If having less of it still makes you feel wacky but less, then stop, switch back to like tea or coffee, or just consider a different pre-workout product. My personal tip to you guys on this is the following. The more hardcore feel and underground feel the company and the label and the the package has, um, the more often they're likely to have wacky stuff. Big company products are less likely to have it. So, you know, you know, if you have the the optimum nutrition pre-workout, that's probably a more dependable go-to to not have weird stuff in it than like, you know, the Gizinator 5000 or the blood, urine, and super stack 250 max plus. Because blood and urine stack 250 max just wasn't good enough. And you have to have the plus. Scott, imagine the plus comes out, but then another product comes out. It's all that. It's the blood and urine super stack 250 max plus hardcore. Dude, that's that's very hardcore. I love the advertising and marketing they use because they're like, it's not for everyone. Careful. And you're like, (laughs) really? But it's for you, 15-year-old kid working out for the first week of their life. So stuff like that, a lot of times there's a higher probability it's going to have some wacky shit in it. What happens if you get into the tolerance trap? How do you get your way out of it? The tolerance trap is basically regular high-dose stimulant use can lead to you like getting used to it, and then you need it just to function, and you need more, and you need that just to function, and so on and so forth. The same effect you're getting, but you need more and more. A couple options. One... Quitting cold turkey and learning to train without it. I don't use pre-workout for my workouts. I never have. I just don't need it. Not everyone's like that. A lot of people are, but not everyone's like that. Get your music going. Get your real focus, mind-muscle connection. You'll be good to go. Another thing is, if you're training a little less hard every session because you're not on pre-workout, 
you'll just be able to have longer mesocycles, longer strings of weeks in which you train hard, and then you'll make the same gains in the long term, which is why in most cases, caffeine and stimulants don't actually cause large or even detectable gains in muscle mass in large and longer studies because that insta boost just you could just go longer it also accumulates more fatigue for you so you get a bigger stimulus but also bigger fatigue and so if you have a little bit of a smaller stimulus with no pre-workout but smaller fatigue you might be totally good to go here's another way to do it you try some green tea for a month or two pre-workout it works a little bit then you try kind of coffee or diet soda, a little bit more caffeine for you know a month or two. Then you can do pre-workout, but at a lower dose for a month or two, and then moderate dose pre-workout for a month or two after, that real peak. After that, you're really tired, you're beat up, you've been training for like half a year. You take active rest, two weeks of fundamentally no real serious training or no training at all, and then you go back to training without any stimulants at all, or you go back to green tea. This way, you're accommodating for the fact that your body gets used to it and kind of getting a little bit more over time. And then when you're done, you go on active rest and you don't need extra stimulants because you're basically not training and who cares? Two weeks like that and then two weeks after of training with no stimulants or even two weeks with no stimulants for active rest and then two weeks of like green tea or something, you've recovered a huge, huge margin, if not the entirety of your caffeine and stimulant uh, sensitivity, and you're good to go through that whole ramp over again. It's also going to save you some money. It's also going to save you some pain in the ass. And you get a really awesome effect without having like, you know, pre-workout sending you to the moon in week one and week four, it just feels like you're normal again. It's always going to be better times ahead. If your pre-workout is no good and you just can't take it because it screws up your sleep, it does some other wacky stuff, no big deal. Try training without it entirely. You can just do tea or coffee. Because remember, coffee has caffeine in it. It's the number one ingredient anyway in pre-workouts. A lot of people say a cup of black coffee does them about as much good as pre-workout. In many cases, that's true. You can also try citrulline nitrates. You can try electrolyte combos like the Element drink is really awesome for this. You can do beta alanine. uh, And that means there's no stimulants in those things. But you get mega pumps and you feel juicy and that's awesome. It's kind of an awesome psychological enhancer. And again, the pumps probably don't do much. The reason you you grow from pumps is pumps probably just associated with the stimulus that you got. But if you get extra juicier pumps psychologically for vibes wise, it's going to be awesome. Might grow a little bit of extra muscle growth and then everyone's winning. That's the situation with pre-workouts. If you need the ultimate pre-workout, I Pretty sure it's to download and start using the RPI Hypertrophy app. What would I know about that? Link in the description for that. Enjoy your pre-workout, take 50 scoops, and then rocket ship yourself to Mars. There you go, Elon. All it took was 50 scoops of the Ronnie Coleman 3D Ultra Extreme Mega Super Pro Hardcore, not for everyone, limited edition series. See you guys next time.